dongs. <gasps> Chase it, boys! It's the cop! This is Miss Chalice, a cup whose morale was skewed thanks to her successful tactic of using charm and dance to get whatever she wants. She left a mark on the cup duo and fans worldwide as season one or season one A for all of you sticklers out there ended with the cliffhanger of her leaving to let Cuphead and Mugman take the heat for breaking into a cookie factory. We would learn that she has ghostly abilities as she leaves a duo high and dry, but we never learned why. Why is she able to have a mortal in a mortal form? What if I told you that the reason is actually quite Quite entertaining. This is Inkwell City Orphanage, where the children aren't to make a sound, and fun is not allowed. Relative to its contemporaries, the Cuphead show is meaner, and even with this reputation, nothing could have prepared me for the unnamed penguins that run the orphanage. A young Miss Chalice is narrating her hard upbringing in this orphanage, claiming to have the worst chores each time, however, she never gives us a reason as to why. <sighs> This episode really goes out of its way to show you that the orphanage is not a place full of happiness. However, as grueling as the chores are, it hasn't seemed to break Miss Chalice's spirit. Unfortunately, because of the time restraints, we don't really get to learn much in depth about the orphanage, her reputation, the penguins leading it, the other children, or even how long she's been there, much less her true parents, why she enjoys dancing in the first place, where she even got her tap dancing shoes, or even what Cuphead and Mugman were doing at this time, which as a big fan of the the show, those things, while not necessary for this episode, were on my mind throughout this. When you look at the other children, their spirits seem to be broken, and they seem to be quite obedient. So while it makes Miss Chalice look stronger in comparison, it does make me wonder why she's tap dancing despite being given the hardest chores. In classic rubber hose fashion, everyone's actions fall into this catchy rhythmic pattern that Miss Chalice can't seem to avoid vibing to. Miss Chalice, what's our number one rule? No fun of any kind. Whoa, whoa, wait. What's your name? It doesn't matter. She asked Miss Chalice. Not all of you. Jeez, no wonder you guys are doing manual labor. You guys don't understand the concept of names. You know what this reminds me of? The inmates of Summer from SpongeBob. In that episode, SpongeBob erroneously thinks a prison is a summer camp and there's a hilarious dissonance between what's going on and how SpongeBob perceives it via the interactions between SpongeBob and the warden. This has some of the same themes with the penguins trying to break Miss Chalice's spirit and maintain obedience over the children at the orphanage to no avail. With nothing left to lose, Miss Chalice determines she must risk it all all, even if there was a sliver of hope that the grass is greener on the other side. So remember when I said that the episode doesn't really explain much because of its time constraints? Well, one of the side effects of this is that the next scene isn't as impactful as it should be. We have Miss Chalice taking all of these rulers to craft her own makeshift wingsuit. Doing? And that line was delivered perfectly, by the way. However, getting back to my point, this scene should have had more weight and time given to it. She's taking these rulers that I would imagine are not just for intimidation, yet this seems like a task that anyone could have done if they had half a mind to do it. That's one thing about season three or season one C for all you sicklers out there that I consider a negative. All of these plot elements are squished into like four of the 11 episodes. And because of the plot that they wanted to tell, it meant that all of these parts of the story had to be told at like two times speed. I know that behind the scenes there was a lot of struggle to get more episodes and that the season itself was partitioned in a way to make it seem like there were three full seasons. Personally my opinion is a bit more nuanced than that. I would want three full seasons and by that I mean three separate 36 episode seasons. But I would be more than happy to split them up and not have Netflix drop all 36 episodes at once had these seasons not been split in three ways. If that were the case there would be a moderate chance that no one would care about the Cuphead show up to this point because 
because they would have seen all 36 episodes early 2022. Getting back to this however, we get to see the incessant squawking and goofy walk cycle that these Penguin Authority members have as they chase a disobedient Chalice to the end of the hallway. With seemingly nowhere left to go, Miss Chalice takes a leap of faith out of the orphanage to start her new chapter of life. As fun as the idea starts, it is met with the crushing reality that she's now on her own and must find a way to survive somehow. And that's how she found it. <laughs> What a charming little dance. And just like that, everything changed. Miss Chalice always knew that she had something within her heart that she felt instinctually. She had this intuitive sense of rhythm, and now the world is her oyster. Her charm actually ramps up to be used just for the thrill of swindling people out of their stuff quickly. Again, this is one of those things that had there been more time, this could have been explained a lot more and a lot more in depth and just explain Miss Chalice's morality and why she had to go down this route. She goes around scamming the town and they are none the wiser just seeing a winking face and tapping feet and giving up anything and everything that she desires. The episode also shows a clever transition from the younger version of Chalice that we see at the beginning of the episode to the Chalice that we know of now. However, Miss Chalice would be hit with a sobering sense of realism. I'm looking out. genuinely did not expect that at all. It was just so blatant in its portrayal of death. Now for those viewing, hopefully you're watching this after watching my first video on Cuphead season three or even my first video on Miss Chalice because both are important to understand what I'm saying here. To not repeat myself, in short, I thought the devil just became a regular guy in season three and I didn't really care much for that aspect. This is the one episode in this season that I felt like the devil actually earned the right to be called so. Miss Chalice is dazed and confused in her newly acquired afterlife. As she meets the devil, he's seen as incredibly composed and confident while not changing much about the devil that we know and love or even the devil that we've seen in season three so far. He feels like a character to take seriously because the story takes him seriously. Miss Chalice is seen shaking in her boots just at the sight of him. Even Henchman retains his bumbling attitude while not taking away from this scene. Mind you, again, the devil is still as charismatic and cartoony as he always is. This is the devil that we needed in season 3. This is the devil that I was talking about in my first video. Because what this episode builds up to, this is the guy that I want to see. The devil gives Miss Chalice an offer that she can't refuse. I could offer you a second chance. To be normal again? Well, you'd still be a ghost. But you'd have the ability to turn into your living form anytime you want. Okay, sure! There is one more thing. You'd owe me a favor to be named at a later date. Deal? I guess the reason it's such a big deal for me is that when looking at episodes like Special Delivery and Joyride, apparently part one and part two to this entire deal, these episodes were supposed to help build up what is to come. I personally think Joyride is a bunch of filler. Filler that could have been used a lot more efficiently, like jumpstarting earlier into Dance with Danger and extend out the origin story to build up Miss Chalice or build up her deal. These two characters are so vital to the season three finale that it would have been only a net positive to include more development with them leading up to the season 3 finale and build the weight of this deal and the characters and the dynamics. However, that isn't to say that what we got was the worst thing ever, far from it. Miss Chalice, with their newfound life, bound to a favor to the devil, goes back to her normal shenanigans, except this time, she meets the duo who she would have her first friendships with. Granted, if there is one thing that this episode leaned into that Chalice does explain, is that these friendships really shaped her life for the better, which makes the favor she owes to the devil all the more heartbreaking. It's time to cash in on that favor you owe me. Sure, what do you need? I need you to betray the Ding Dongs. This leads into the season finale, The Devil and Miss Chalice, an episode I plan to get around to soon, but for the time being, I do enjoy the story of Miss Chalice, this episode, Dance with Danger. I enjoyed it so much that it made me realize how much time within the show could have went to building all of this up more. I'm not sure if Cuphead is going to be approved for another season, but in the meantime, please support it if you can, and let me know what you think about Miss Chalice's origin story in the comments down below, and until next time, take care. Alpha.